Hi everyone, so I've had quite a few comments recently on some of these videos that involve the Persona 5 graphics and the people asking me how did I make them and I've decided that I'm going to show you how to make some of the things that I've done because I like sharing knowledge and I like looking at tutorials on YouTube so I figured I would start off with some of the easier stuff because it's kind of, well, it's easier for me to teach it because um, some of the stuff I kind of just winged it and eventually worked it like the Persona 5 intro that's got quite a lot going on to it and I made it quite a while ago so I don't quite remember how to do it but the one that I'm going to show you today is this looping star background which I've called it and I've done two different variations of it I'll show you how I made both of them one is a little bit more involved with it having the um, the transparent background and it scales up and it's got the red line and stuff like that but um, I'll show you how to do the other version first and then you can adapt it to um, whatever you need it to and I'll show you how to do the other version afterwards. I just want to point out as well that I'm still quite new to After Effects. I've only really been deep diving into it for about a year so there's still a lot of stuff I don't know. So if you find the way I've described something or explained it difficult leave a comment and I'll try and explain it better. Um, but also as well I, I find that I might do something quite um, like laborious or quite a convoluted way of doing it. There's probably a lot quicker ways using shortcuts and stuff like that. But that's one of the things that I really like about After Effects is you can take something someone else has made, you can like reverse engineer it or you can take just part of it and adapt it into your own compositions, which I find I do a lot of the time. I won't just copy something one for one or go through a whole tutorial I'll only pick out a certain point of it and then adapt that to something that I'm going to make so um, you might find that the way I've done something the end product is what you want but the way that I get to it might be not the way you would do it and that's also fine all right enough rambling on about that let's actually get into the tutorial so first thing going to After Effects new composition as per usual I'm just going to call this one main comp because it's just a tutorial I'm not going to actually be saving it um, your presets here, pick whatever one you want. I'll just go 1920 by 1080 because it's gone on YouTube. And then the frame rate, I tend to do a lot of stuff working with uh, match footage of football and rugby where I film it at 50 frames a second. So I tend to make stuff in 50 frames so it's a consistent frame rate throughout the whole video. And stuff doesn't end up looking strange because it's like going from 23 to 50. You can change this to whatever you want. Um, depending on the look you want, 12, 15 frames can give you a sort of hand animated feel which I have used. Um, if you want filmic you go 23, 24 but I'm going to stick with 50 because the other thing as well is if you um, put this into Premiere and you want to slow it down a bit it gives you more of an option um, rendering it in 50 frames. Uh, duration just going to go 6 seconds because you know again you can just up this if you want or lower it if you want. Background I'm going to go, actually I'm going to go something a little bit lighter, that'll do, but that doesn't matter because um, we'll probably get rid of the background anyway when we're rendering it. So first thing I did was I grabbed this file from the internet because this is basically what I wanted my finished product to look like, multiple stars, um, change the colour of it but um, yeah basically I was going to say as well I've got quite a lot of stuff here. I basically put everything into this one project file because I can just grab and drop things in. I realize it's messy but it works for me. So anyway I'm going to scale this up just so we've got the full thing. It doesn't actually really matter. You don't even need to use this reference if you don't want to. Now when I first did this I was daft and used the pen tool and drew a star shape. Then later on down the line I realized don't need to do that because there is already a star tool in After Effects. So I'm going to drag that out and if anything actually I can just move this out of the way because basically what I'm using this reference for, like I say originally I used it to actually draw a perfect star shape that would be exactly the same as the used in the game but because I've actually got the star tool here I'm really all I need to do is just have a look at how they've done the star. So they've got a star with three black stars, a black outline there, and then it's got three 
it would be white um, normally, but it's got three red inside it. So that's what we are going for here. So draw your star. You might have to mess around with some of these. So we want no fill, and the stroke with 25 is fine. You can lower this or increase it if you want. And I'm going to change that to black. Then we're going to press Control D, or you can go Edit, Duplicate Layer, and then we're just going to scale this down a bit. Now I tried putting on the snapping tool to do this, and because of the shape of it, it kind of snaps to the wrong point, so it'll kind of snap like you see now, so it technically is doing the right thing, but it's not what we want, so I didn't bother using the snapping tool, but you can try it if you want. So basically, because of that, we're going to have to just eyeball it. Now, for the most part, it's not too difficult. If you zoom in to about there, you can see that there's no purple uh, pixels between the black and the white one. So that means that it's pretty much either covering it or perfectly intersected. So we're going to do that. So this is basically it. We're going to just keep duplicating layers and then moving them around a little bit. So I'm just going to fast forward through this because it's not exactly fun to watch, but you understand that you're basically just putting the layer down, duplicating it, changing the color, changing the scale of it to how you want it, and eventually we'll come to a full star like this. All right, okay, so now we got our finished star here. So what you need to do with this black one here towards the end is just increase the stroke size so you've got quite a bit of a thicker star and just kind of scale it down a little bit so the insides of it um, are still thick but it's not covering up more of the outside one. And then um, I added the fill here um, to make it black just again to make that um, thicker on the inside. And then the last one, this last white one here, um, just made that fill white. So again, you've got a full star there. So you can, um, I'd say if you wanted to not do that layer and just have it continue all the way through and you get a nice effect as well. So either or, um, but this is closer to the, the one that we started off with on the reference. Okay, so now that we've got our star made, that's basically the hard work done. All we need to do now is just animate it. So what I did originally was I just scaled it up and down. Um, so we'll go down to this bottom layer since we don't need to do it for every single layer. We'll put a scale keyframe here. And I've already got one there. So that's good. What I'll do is I'll drag it halfway through. So three seconds and you can see I've got it keyframed up to 140 so right now it's quite a quick but not ridiculously quick um, scale up. I'm just going to just move it slightly ahead and then what I'll do is we'll add another keyframe just there of the same value and then that way it'll get to that point it'll hold for not very long but just a little bit and then what I can do get to six seconds here we'll just call that the end of the uh, composition there at six seconds and then I can bring it back down to 95 and then that way you get it expanding holds for a split second and then it scales down again and what I'm also going to do is I'm just going to add a slight rotation because I don't like it being just straight up it looks better having that little bit of randomness to it. So now that we've got the animation made, we can take these layers and I'm going to pre-compose them. We'll just call it star. And that way it's a lot easier to manage with the layers because you'll have six layers for every single star that you duplicate and it'll end up being too much. So same again, duplicate go to position and then we can just drag this out or drag it around anywhere we want rotate and scale it down a little bit and as you can see it's got the same keyframes we don't need to mess around with any of that and that's basically it so we just need to keep duplicating these layers and you can change them into the background what I did was I had bigger ones in the background 
and smaller ones at the front because in that way you're getting the background completely covered but um, then you're also getting smaller ones at the front which have a bit more um, like sort of detail going on with them because the bigger ones you won't really see much of the actual uh, animation going on with them so I'll just scale this one up a bit rotate it just to make it a bit different uh, and that's basically it we're just going to keep doing this for the rest of them depending on your PC you might need to um, have more you might need to have less if your PC can handle it the more the better because the more you have the better it's going to look it's going to look more interesting Right, so there you have it, that is our finished animation. Like I say, you can edit this any more that you want to do, so you can add more stars, you can have less, you can uh, change the position and stuff like that. You can keep messing around with the keyframes if you want some of them to come in later, um, scale up slower and stuff like that. I quite like it just being uniform because it's got this uh, like pulse going on with it. So that's it for that one, but... Um, like I say, we can do the other version that I started with. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete all of these just to restart it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back into our original comp. Um, like not the pre-comp one. I'm going to hit you just to look at the keyframes. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to zero. And then set this end one to zero as well. And it's basically, it's because it's got the same keyframes, it's going to do the same thing, but it's going to start from zero. So if we take the background away, and do on this one as well. So, because we don't have a background on it, if we put an image there, or if we put um, another uh, piece of video or whatever, as you can see there. So now, imagine that this, this is a video that you're working on. You could have the video end and then have this come up and be like an end screen for you or you could use this as a transition if you wanted to so we're basically gonna do the same thing again so we're just gonna keep um, duplicating them again just mess around with the positioning and your rotation and whatnot and yeah we're just gonna I'm just gonna fast forward through this and I'll show you the end result. So as you can see here, this is the finished version for this tutorial. I won't go much further because it'll basically just be me duplicating layers and moving stuff so you can do it however you want. But as you can see, it comes in from zero, scales up quite big and then they disappear again. So like I say, you could use this uh, for a transition or if you wanted to coming off a, like an end screen or something you could even have it where they don't actually disappear at the end they just come in from zero stay around and just scale up slowly but um, yeah this is what I did for that other version and what I also did on that was I made a new shape layer and I'm going to put this all the way at the top and I basically just added a pen tool then I'm going to change the fill down to zero. I'm going to change the stroke to bright red. And we'll see how 43 is looking. Okay, After Effects is really not liking this at the moment. So anyway, take the pen tool and we're just going to draw a zigzag line through our composition. And this is quite similar to what they have in the game. So you want it to be quite jagged. And I'm going to have it get really jagged at the end here and then I'm going to have it just go off and it's quite thin there so I'm going to stretch this out a bit so make that about there and I'm just going to drag this out a little bit so that'll do for now and then what I did was just simply add a trim path to it. So we're going to trim path and we'll have this come in around one second. So change the end to zero here 
and we'll have it be completed there and then we'll add another keyframe there just so it stays at 100% there and then we'll have it go away at 5 so then at this point you want to hit start there actually we'll move that back a little bit hit the start point bring that back and then hit the start point to zero so that way it kind of draws itself in and then it follows the same path and erases itself and then to make it look even more like the game we'll duplicate that again I'm going to move this below I'm just going to rename this to drop shadow or it could disappear <laughs> and I'll change this to black and then we'll hit T on there and we'll drop the opacity down to we'll try 60 so then change the position and just drop that slightly below it and you can add it slightly to the right and now if I put the background on for a sec and just delete some of these well you can see it there so it's got a well basically yeah like a drop shadow and it's running at the same time so it should come out and look quite um, realistic so you can see there it looks like a reasonably good drop shadow if you wanted to you could um, stagger this just a little bit and that means that it comes out slightly slower and uh, you can play around with that so that's basically the composition finished um, I would say just kind of play around with it in your own version and you'll probably do a better job with the line than I did here but let's say that's basically it so I hope you found this useful and um, I'm gonna have some more tutorials probably told a little bit better than this one I might have to kind of script something out but anyway thanks for watching I don't have an ending so yeah bye